So just continuing on working on the Briggs Straight 8 here. Starting to look more like a candy cane. So I brought a couple of them out there. Give them little ears, I guess. Oh, Mr. Bumblebee just came for a visit. Had one in the house yesterday. Anyway, so I've uh, got all of the uh, engines uh, coupled together here. And holes all drilled in the frame. Haven't got a crankshaft in the last engine. I had to guesstimate it. It's still being machined for flywheel and additional starters, but they're all bolted down solid, so that's good. She's really impressive to look at. End to end there. Probably weighs the order of 300 pounds, I'm imagining. So, anyway, now I can go ahead and get to final dimensions for the intake manifolds. So that's what I will be uh, working on next. So I'm a little bit further along here. I've got uh, part of the intake manifold uh, test fit on here, being held in position with the handyman secret weapon there, uh, duct tape. So then the uh, carburetor will feed into the main piece here and then it'll split and go out and then there'll be a separate piece that'll come out and go over here. It'll be a little bit further out than it is at the moment, so we'll uh, be able to make the corner there. And then uh, come out this end and go into number four cylinder there. So, uh, and then it'll just be duplicated on the, the second four cylinders there. So, got my uh, all eight exhaust pipes there temporarily fit up. So, more progress. And some of the uh, intake manifold pieces here uh, so that uh, AC DC welding there let me uh, use the drill press there and, uh, and he uh, coped these various pieces so we got uh, basically it'll sit like uh, this two of these go on here and then this one goes on this side the carburetor sits over here so I'm just getting ready to uh, Start uh, welding the bits and pieces together here, trying to get everything lined up as best I can. So, uh, so they all fit together okay in that. So, still uh, coming along here, but it takes a long time to do all these little bits and pieces. And here we have the welded up uh, intake manifolds. We'll have to uh, flap disc them, get the weld spatter off, and that type of thing. So clean them up there, and uh, also got to cut pipes to length and different things like that. Then uh, next uh, fitting goes on the end there. That so at least they're welded up now. So here I show how I make the uh, intake uh, stubs that. Uh, bolt to the block and then have uh, three-quarter pipe thread which I can uh, attach various things to either three-quarter pipe or a uh, brass coupling to copper pipe or whatever anyway I start out with a four inch uh, three-quarter pipe nipple and I cut it in half uh, to give me like a piece of pipe stub then I uh, clamp it in my big vise here and squash it down grip it about a quarter inch up like so, and squash it down till it's the the uh, size oval that I want there to uh, fit on. Uh, if it's this way between the bolt holes there. Now, granted, it ends up you know, wider than the hole is, but you know it's not built for 100% flow. It's just made to work. So then when you weld it up, it looks like that. And, uh, from this side, a lot of times I weld both inside and out. Because uh, generally you have to grind off a bunch of the weld right uh, by the bolts there. Even using uh, Allen head uh, bolts. It's uh, cap screws, I guess they call them. Uh, it's a, it's a tight, tight fit for the, the bolt there. So. So that's why I also weld on the inside at that point, especially. So 
kind of crude, but it works. And then the, the purpose of the thread is to allow me to uh, remove these and reuse them for uh, different engine configurations, etc. Uh, you could do it without a thread, but like I say, it gives you uh, more flexibility in uh, taking it back apart. So continuing on here with uh, building the intake manifolds, I um, just want to show you here my uh, shielding using some old uh, scrap uh, sheetrock here and some steel angle. And uh, I have used incorporated a flex joint in uh, this and that's actually helping hold the, the pipe in place here while I, uh, I'm welding it. And it just uh, gently inserts into uh, this uh, half of a coupling there, a coupling that I've cut in half basically butts up against it and uh, I've uh, tack welded it so I'll take it off and uh, weld it all around there but to do so I had to uh, shield the engines here otherwise the, the paint gets uh, burned up on them so so the intake manifolds uh, just about uh, on there now I uh, had to do some uh, welding here burn up a little bit of paint this uh, muffler wants to rotate you put them on a angle like that they, they want to rotate so and then on number four cylinder here I, um, the engine block was completely stripped out so I had to make a flange there to, uh, to bolt the elbow uh, to the engine block so I had to cut the elbow off remove all the threads basically and uh, make it the same so it looks the same as the others I almost got it at the same angle it didn't work out too bad so each uh, each cylinder is kind of unique on this engine so lots of fun getting it to work yeah I'll finally got the first uh, intake manifold complete here as you can see I have uh, some hose clamps to put on still uh, on the three connectors there but she's all uh, welded up and everything so allows basically it's connected solidly to number two cylinder and then goes through a rubber a flex connection here and then flex connections on uh, one and four allows for movement or any kind of uh, thermal expansion or anything like that and I believe I'm going to fasten a brace from here down to the frame just to uh, help it out with any vibration since by the time it's said and done it sticks about a foot out from the engine so I'm sure that'll give it some length there to try to start swaying around but anyway it's good to have one of the two manifolds done and now that I you know have the pattern figured out uh, how to do it and all that uh, the second one will go uh, somewhat faster so we'll get that done and hopefully get this thing uh, running as soon as I can.